Let's turn to the day's other main story. Fears are growing that it won't be possible to stop the global spread of coronavirus. Uh, health experts have warned that the chances of containing it are diminishing as cases appear in more countries. Most infections are still in China, but there are a number of significant clusters elsewhere. Around 77,000 people have been infected in China, uh, where the virus emerged last year. There have been nearly 2,600 deaths. South Korea, which has the largest number of confirmed cases outside China, has more than 830 cases. Eight people have died so far. Iran says it has 61 cases of the virus and that 12 of those infected have died. And in Europe, Italy is the worst affected. More than 220 people have tested positive for coronavirus and there are six reported deaths. Eleven towns have been put into quarantine to try to contain the virus. In a moment, we'll bring you the latest from our correspondents in China and in South Korea. But first, Mark Lowen reports from Italy, from the town of Codogno, which is southeast of Milan. They try to halt a virus they cannot see, scrambling to contain the invisible. Behind the barriers, more than 50,000 people are quarantined, as cases rise and so do the deaths. Italy has Europe's worst coronavirus outbreak, the third highest in the world after China and South Korea. We're following our instructions, he says, blocking roads and asking people inside not to leave their homes unless absolutely necessary. Well, this is the exclusion zone now on the road to Codogno, the centre of the outbreak. And you can see they're stopping all the cars trying to enter here and all those trying to leave. Depends whether they've got the, they've got the authorization as to whether they can pass through. And the Carabinieri and military are deciding whether or not to widen this exclusion zone in an attempt to control the coronavirus spread. For some, old-worldly methods of sending supplies to a cut-off town, Tino delivering face masks to his sister stuck inside. She's grateful they've run out there. We were sent pictures from a pharmacy in Codogno serving anxious queues. Buongiorno Andrea. Buongiorno Marco, come stai? And the man who filmed them told us of the growing sense of fear. We feel a bit abandoned. The news we get comes through WhatsApp or Facebook. There's a lot of false rumors around. E tra la gente c'è il panico? Are people panicked? Yes, people are panicking. Some convince themselves it will blow over. Others are worried and can't sleep. In nearby Milan, the cathedral that's withstood 500 years is closed. Schools and universities are shut off. And in supermarkets, panic is spreading quicker than the virus. And it, too, is hard to stem. Mark Lowen, BBC News, Northern Italy. Fear has driven thousands in Daegu into a panic-buying frenzy. They queued for hours, even sprinting to the back of the line in the hope of getting a face mask. But some had to leave empty-handed. This is the first time we've been out the house in three days, and we couldn't buy more masks. Elsewhere, it's eerily quiet. Only a few stall holders have decided to open. I've been working in this market for 40 years, but I've never seen anything like this. Most residents have decided to stay indoors as officials race to find those who've been infected. There are no travel restrictions in place for now. As you drive through the worst affected areas, the local government sends alerts detailing virus hotspots to avoid. But that's the kind of thing another we're one, another one. Oh, we got another one coming? Yeah. Each message has detailed notes of confirmed cases nearby. Completed. Meanwhile, medics on the front line battle on. Doctors sent us these images to show us the kind of precautions they're taking while treating hundreds of patients. In North Korea, they claim to have no cases of coronavirus after they sealed off their border with China in January. All 380 foreigners in the country have been quarantined. Experts fear an outbreak in this secretive state, where millions are malnourished, could be catastrophic.
back in the south, there is a sense of urgency. Officials say the next few days will be crucial if they're to prevent this outbreak becoming an epidemic. Laura Bicker, BBC News, Daegu. China is going all out to contain the virus. This is an infection control squad in training. But there are still questions over its early response and the silencing of medics who tried to raise the alarm. The public anger hasn't gone away. Here, a man films as doctors attend to his mother, but they can't save her. Later, he films as a funeral car arrives. The government thinks we're foolish. They say it's a natural disaster, he tells me. But it's actually caused by humans. If they'd warned us in time, he asks, would so many people die? The World Health Organization, though, was full of praise for the actions China has taken. China has rolled out probably the most ambitious and I would say agile and aggressive uh, disease containment effort in history. To what extent do you think cover-up and censorship played a role in allowing this virus to accelerate at the rate it did? I don't know. Frankly, didn't, didn't look at that. I'm, I'm just being completely honest. But what worries me most is, has the rest of the world learned the lesson of speed? Once China had woken up to the danger, that speed, the rapid quarantining of cities and the shutting down of the economy, appears to have worked and is now being held up as a model for the world. As the virus was allowed to spiral out of control in the province of Hubei, it spread in smaller but significant pockets to every province in China. This is the picture of a disaster and it forced the government to act and here's what happened. The official figures show that in Hubei, although the numbers are still high, they are stabilising, and for the rest of China, even better news. The numbers kept low by those containment measures, and if we have a closer look, for more than a week now, they've been falling. China's been so effective, the World Health Organization says, it's now safe to get the economy going again. Welcome news on this farm. With the roads all blocked, of course it's brought sales down, Wei Hongkun tells me. If China's control of information helped start the crisis, its control over its people might help solve it. But how many other countries might really be able to replicate this? John Sudworth, BBC News, Beijing. Well, here in the UK, although more than 6,500 people have been tested for the virus, so far just 13 have tested positive, including the four cases who were aboard the Diamond Princess cruise ship in Japan. They've now returned home. Our medical correspondent, Fergus Walsh, explains how people can best protect themselves from coronavirus. The new coronavirus spreads through droplets in the air when infected people cough. So, if you're just a few feet from them, you could breathe in the virus. If you touch an infected surface and then rub your eyes or mouth, that can also pass it on. It's why regular hand washing is important. None of us has any immunity to this virus, so if there's a major outbreak, any of us could catch it. But it's worth stressing that it causes only a mild respiratory illness in four out of five people who'll get better without any medical treatment. The symptoms begin with a fever and a dry cough. The older you are, the greater the risk of complications such as shortness of breath and pneumonia, especially for those with underlying health problems such as heart and lung disease and diabetes. But the biggest viral threat at present is seasonal flu, which causes thousands of deaths in the UK every year. If we get small, limited outbreaks here, we could see the same sort of quarantine restrictions that are being tried in other countries. School closures are possible, as are the postponing of sporting fixtures and other public events, anything where large groups of people congregate. But if we get cases popping up all over the country, then locking down communities 
won't be possible. Instead, the focus will be on getting people to self-isolate. The longer we can keep this virus at bay, the better, because with the warmer weather, there's a chance that cases might start to dwindle. That was uh, Fergus there, our medical correspondent, and staying with this story, it's been a rather turbulent day on the global financial markets, which fell today as concerns grew uh, about the impact of coronavirus. And with me in the studio is our economics editor, Faisal Islam. So what have the markets been doing, Faisal? Sharp falls across the world. Uh, in the US, the Dow Jones Industrial Average just closed down over a 1,000 points, uh, about just over 3%. That were followed the close in European markets of between 3 and 4% down uh, in the UK, the sharpest one day slump for four and a half years with airlines such as EasyJet and Ryanair losing large fractions of their value. Uh, also travel companies such as TUI and Carnival, which runs cruises uh, and mining companies with big, big exposure to China. Tens of billions lost off the UK stock market and European stock markets too. And then what you've seen is over the past couple of weeks, markets took some reassurance from one of those charts that our reporter just showed there, that it seemed to be being contained in China, the source of the outbreak. What we've seen today from our other reporters is that clusters and fairly extensive clusters in Italy and South Korea have got those fears stoked up again. It's a health story primarily, but if the health story remains out of control, then you have a, a real economic impact. Okay, Faisal, thanks very much again. Faisal is done there, economic senator.